Welcome to the Mind Craft Podcast. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I have with me the amazing Rich Bruno. Rich and I have met in the uh, Mastermind Group, the Rising Tide Connection we're a part of, and Rich and I became fast friends. I'll tell you something, Rich is here to speak to us today on well-balanced leadership as he is an executive coach and business consultant for the Rich Bruno Consulting Agency. So, Rich, I'm so thrilled to have you here with us today. I am too, Kim. It is such a pleasure to be with you. You are such a breath of fresh air and so positive. I just love your company, so I'm excited about our conversation. Um, You mentioned the Well-Balanced Leader Model. Mm -hmm. It's something that I developed about a year ago. And overall, the way to kind of frame in the Well-Balanced Leader Model is... It is about living a totally fulfilled life, and I think that's super positive. So I think for me, it's all about how can you have it all, and it really targets the executive community, right? So imagine an executive leader, CEO, C-suite leader, who is running and gunning all day and doing all the work and like getting all the accolades about you know all the results of the company and this, that, and the other, but there's so much that's missing, right? the rest of their life, right? Their personal life, the things that are important to them, their hobbies, their relationships, right? So I developed this well-balanced leader model with a look back from my own career, right? So I retired at 55, two weeks after I turned 55, and I just needed to improve the quality of my life. I just need, I felt it. I was burning the candle at both ends, and I wasn't happy with, the way my life was going because I was missing things in my family and things that were important to me. So develop this model. It's got five slices to it, which we can go into in a little bit of detail. But in essence, it encapsulates both the professional elements that are important to executives and the personal side so that you don't lose sight of the other things that are important to you in your personal life. Oh, I love this. In fact... Rich has some, some videos out there. We'll put that in the, in the bottom there. But I was watching one of them today and I think one of them yesterday. And you just think, you know, that executives, or they've got it all going on and stuff. But here's the thing. If you hate your life, you hate your life. It doesn't mean if you have a seven-figure income or, 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 you're, or you're working, at, you know, doing something with a, with, a, with a lower income. If you hate your life, you hate your life, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know what? You know this, but... And it's kind of cliche, but... Nothing's promised. Right. I mean, nothing is promised, right? So for me, what I've uh, embraced is this concept that you got to live every day to the fullest. You absolutely do. And that was the trigger for me to retire at 55. Right. Like, I left a great career behind. I was also an entrepreneur, so I had a small business. But it boiled down to making choices. It just boiled down right. to making choices. Right, right, right. Right? You can't do everything and be all things to all people. You need 100%. to make choices. Right? So the choices for me were actually rather simple, but it was at a cost. I had to give something up, right? Mm-hmm. I had to give a great career up, a very good salary. And I went to my entrepreneurial space, which is a small business that I run, a health and fitness program which actually is so fulfilling because it helps people to live happier, healthier lives. Mm -hmm. It's about physical and mental well-being. And that drives everything else. If you are satisfied, it's like that inside-out job, right? If you're satisfied with yourself and you're fulfilled yourself, you have so much to give to all the people and the, 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 the communities you serve and just all the things that are important to you. But it starts with you and anchoring in you. And actually, with the Well-Balanced Leader Model, there's a self-care element, which is all about that. It's all about those routines that fulfill you so you can bring your best self to everything else. I love that. You know how I feel about life minutes. I mean, this, I agree, Rich. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is the big game. You know, there's, and as we, and as we advance in age, there are fewer life minutes in front of us than behind us. So, you know, I I really get you know why you just got to this point where you're like wait put the brakes on yeah yeah and you know I'm, I'm glad looking back I'm so glad that I came to that realization mm-hmm. because as you said it's as you move on in age 
let's just face it, the mortality kind of is more present for you. Like you're thinking right. more about it, right? Right. You right, see right. people in your family, they're aging, Truth. they pass on, this, that, and you start to really like crave the time you have. You really, you really do. You crave the time you have. So I was fortunate, very healthy at 55. I'm like, you know what? My twins are 14, my daughter's 11. I'm fully invested as a dad, but I'm like a hamster on a wheel. Right. I'm like, just run it through every day, one's rolling into the next. And I'm like, you know what? That's not good enough for me. That's just right. not good enough. For me. I gotta be in more of what's going on at a pace that gives me a better quality life. So that was the slow down moment for me. I've lived into it 100%. I will tell you, 100% conviction on this decision. Like, there was no turning back. I have no regrets in the choices that I made. And I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm living my very best life. I really am. That's awesome. I remember you and I had this, this chat right before uh, I, I was voted off the island at the, the college where I was. And, I, and, I, and I, no, I'm just thinking, though, the truth that I've lived this way for a long time, right? I mean, do you want it on your memorial stone? She, she, she answered every email. She never missed a meeting. Who gives a fat rat's ass? You know, it's all about the relationships and the love and the joy. The rest of it doesn't matter in the end. It doesn't. I mean, I, I recently spoke to a group and I talked about this moving on moment, right? And I said, you know, the reality is I was a great performer, but so what? Like, I left and it's like, have a nice day, Rich. The company will carry on. Like, everything will right. continue the same right. after right, you're right, gone right. versus when you were there. They're all The only difference is you're not there. Right. right? So just don't lose the opportunity to serve yourself. That's really what the – this is like the well-balanced leader model. It's you can be totally fulfilled in life, which is right. personal and professional, but you got to make choices. You, you just got to make choices. choices. You gotta make choices. You're, you're, you're making me think, um, Rich, of you know my dear friend Oprah. You know we're very close. She's just not aware of our relationship, but we're very tight. And when she talks <laughs> about this thing, like how selfish gets this bad stigma. You know, like 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 keep. We cannot give what we don't have. As a parent, you're talking about being a father, a good father. We, as a parent, as a partner, as a CEO, as a as an employee, as an anybody. So the way Oprah said, I have my mug right here. What's in here is for me. What overflows is, to, is for the rest of everybody. And we cannot give what we do not have. And I don't think people rich, I don't think that they realize that's good selfish because when, when we're filled up, you and I both know what that feels like. You feel like that's, you have the world by the ass. Like you have so much to, like just so much no to doubt. give to people. And that's the way I want to live my life. So, you know, you're right on. And I appreciate that we think this way together, right? So... Yes, it's the value of time and it's the greatest asset that we have and it doesn't wait for us. But at the same time, I want to make sure, and I talk about this not being selfish as well, right? So the self-care piece of the well-balanced leader model is about fulfilling yourself so you can bring your best, as I mentioned earlier, to everything and everyone that's important, anything that's important to you, right. around you, to them. Um, and you do it in a way that you know, you have great positive energy, you're clear, you could be fully present. Like you, you mentioned that little clip that you saw yesterday or the other day about my son. And, and that was part of it as well. Like these are reflections I have in my life. And I realized that I was running and gunning, trying to do it all professionally and personally. And he only fit so much in that cup, right? So I was that guy that would come in the door, phone in hand, right? finish it up something, and I got these young kids tugging at me, which I'm so grateful I have that. Right, right, right. But I wasn't fully there, and it was very clear to them that I wasn't fully there. And so... Can you maybe share that with the listeners, real. Rich? Because I, I, I saw... I certainly can. So, yeah, the, the short version of the story is I was an entrepreneur and a corporate leader at the same time. Trying to do both really was quite the task. So my lifestyle was I'd get up at 3.30 in the morning, very active owner operator in a health and fitness program. I would get up at 3.30 five days a week. 
I would go teach a 5 a.m. class. I would take a 6 a.m. class. I would leave and drive to work, take a shower, work all day. Literally, everything was like precision. If I hit traffic, I was screwed, pretty much. Right? So wow. everything was to the minute. And I would leave work, handle calls, get home. And this is the moment where I was trying to catch up with my business since I left the work. And I was trying to do that at night and on weekends. And it had an impact on my family, my kids in particular, right? So my wife was very understanding, but I'd walk in the door with the phone in my hand, finishing an email, finishing a text. Right. And my kids would be waiting for me. Like twin eight-year-olds and a five-year-old. They're waiting for daddy to come home. They don't care that I have an email to finish or someone's calling me. They could care less. Right. Right? So my son called me on it. It was very humiliating, I have to tell you. It, it, it gets me choked up just when I think about it. Right. Like that I feel like I kind of let them down. But I was not thinking about it. I right. wasn't right. fully present. And the well-balanced leader model is about being fully present about what serves you the most in your life, including your family and the people you love. So my son sees me on this phone. He's like, Dad, put your phone down. You're home now. And he's free he's, eight. And he's, he's telling right. me this. He's in, he's telling me this. I'm like, now, okay, that's embarrassing. That was quite an aha but also, moment, huh? It's a huge aha moment. It was like a kick in the, I'll say teeth, for, in the interest of <laughs> keeping it clean. It was, like, it, was like, it was like a kick in the teeth that my eight-year-old had to be the wise one and say, right. you're not fully here. You're like, we need you. You're not really here. You're doing something else. So... That was a big wake-up call for me. You're right, an aha moment. And it was, I changed from that moment. I did not. I changed that behavior. But well, it ran, still but caused it, me to run and gun and recognize that this creation of the well-balanced leader model breaks down professional excellence and personal needs. That's like right. the simplest way to put it. But it does require choices. You could be a rock star executive, right, Leadership excellence is one of the key elements of this well-balanced leader pie. Mm -hmm. Time management mastery is another one, which kind of spills over to personal. And then on the left side of that pie, there are three slices. The first one is self-care, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. The second one is continuous development. And by the way, continuous development is not just what certifications I get at work. Continuous development is how do I better be a better dad, husband, right. server of the community, like friend, brother, son, whatever it is. It's continuing to develop yourself right. and then creating your legacy, which I think is, Kim, I know you're going to appreciate this. This is where it's at for me. That last slice of that pie, which is creating your legacy, is what it's really all about for me. Like, as we are givers, right? You spend, you know, a, a lot of years in academia serving others and making other people better, Right. And you're living a life now that you're serving others in a different way, but it's always serving others, right? So that giver's mindset mm -hmm. to me is about just what kind of an impact could I have on the people around me? Like at the end of the day, creating your legacy is what would people say about me? Like how did I help them? What kind of an influence did I have on them? Right. Like I think that's, what we're here for. Like, I really believe that. Like, 100%. my role on this earth is to be doing great things for the people around me. That's what, that, what's, that, that fills me up, right? That makes me feel good. And so, if that's going to be kind of my guiding light, I just have to do everything that supports that, and I'm good. Right, right, right. Okay? No, I, I really love that, Rich, and I, I think... You know, a lot of times people think that you have to do something huge, like join the Peace Corps or even be, or be a teacher. We, we can make a difference doing absolutely anything when you do it with your own, your own passion and you stay on your purpose. You're making a difference in lives. Absolutely right. And that's such a key point. It's about just any small thing that you could do that leaves an impression on somebody. It could be... A fundraiser, like our small business, we are right. actively involved in the community. And I will tell you, over 10 years, we've raised north of 150 grand. 
for, wow. for non-profit wow. Wow. 501c3s. Every year we pick one, our members are invested in that choice. It's right. always a local 501c3. We connect with them, we learn about their organization, we bring people together, we raise money, we look for organizations to support it, like do matches and things like that. It's not uncommon for us to raise 25 grand for an event. Wow. Okay? It's happened two or three times over. Not every year, sometimes it's 10, 8, 12, but we've had uh, autism. We raised money for autism, 25 grand. We raised money for sun, sudden SUDC, sudden unexplained death in children. It's, it's not, there's no um, like a medical diagnosis and it's not right, right, federally right. funded, right? And we know people from our community that have suffered from this and it's just, you can't help but want to do something good for them. You know? and it and us, it so whether it's sad. a community or it's your kids or your spouse or your parents, a friend, someone on the street, it doesn't matter. No. It's just the, the the mindset of having that that way of being and that desire to help. Being of much. service. Yes, Regardless absolutely. Of religion, and that also or... spills over into that spills yeah. over into professional space too, right? So right, right, right. servant leaders. Same Which is where I was thinking you were gay. You, you know, it was a nice little segue into your... Uh, Rich and I were talking about the well-balanced leadership model having to do with empathy. And I wanted to throw in here, because I think you'll run with this as well, Rich. I was reading a Tony Robbins article about... I don't know if you saw it about... Recently, a month ago, six weeks ago. He was, And it was longer than what I'm going to say, but he was talking about leaders being, being way more about influence versus position. So, so your empathy thing, I think, could maybe kind of flow into the responsibility that a good leader has to be other-oriented and the, and the things you want that you're saying right now. Maybe you want to take us there for, for a moment. Yeah, absolutely, I can. Um, I was really blessed to be um, in great organizations. J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson was the last one in my supply chain leadership career the last six, 15, 16 years. And they were all about people. And, you know, leadership to me, and I got certified as a John Maxwell coach, speaker, and trainer after I retired. I didn't mention that, but and John Maxwell is like a leadership guru, right? Great leadership principles, and he's all about the people and influencing and relationships and communication. So servant leaders and this concept of empathy, right, has all to do with thinking of others. Like a leader's role is to multiply other leaders, your role is to develop your organization mm -hmm. to be more effective leaders in the future. Maybe they'll even be your boss. And you have to be okay with that. You have to go into being a leader that it's not about you. Right. It's about the people that you're working with. And I never say for. The people that you're working with are the people that you're serving. And your job is to put them in a position to be successful, eliminate barriers, go to bat for them, give them opportunities to grow, all of those things, but there's the empathy part, which you hit on before, and that's about the culture in your organization, right? If you have someone on your team, you're serving them as a servant leader, right, professionally, but that also goes, spills over into the personal space. What if they have a personal need? And the example I used in that clip that you're referring to about empathy was, let's say a team member says to you, hey, um, I have a personal issue at home, I really have to take care of it. Now, you don't want to invade their privacy. You're not going to kind of ask them what's going on. Right. You're just right. going to automatically sign up for, what do you need? How can I help you? Right. We got you. That's what they want to hear. They don't want, oh, there's a bunch of BS about you don't have any more sick time. You can't take a vacation day yet. Who cares? This is a human being you're talking about. Right. 100%. Right? This is a human 100%. being. And I always just say, you have to treat people the way you would want to be treated. Like, if I had an issue, I'd want someone to say, no problem, I got you. What do you need? We talked about this before, giving, right? So someone comes to you and you think they have a need, it may be personal, it doesn't matter how long it's going to be. It doesn't matter even what it is. You just pick the ball up. Right. You just, we got you, don't worry about it, let me know how I can help you. And then you rally your team. And if you create the right culture in your organization, you're going to have a bunch of people that think the same way. 
and they're going to all be about place. it's a positive environment where we all succeed or fail together someone's out of pocket they have an issue they can't do their job for whatever reason as a leader if you're a really effective leader you have an environment a culture where people will take the baton willingly and help they'll do what it takes and I mentioned in this clip if you don't have the resources on your team to help out that person that says, hey, I need some help, you sign up for it. Right. You do it as the leader. And I did mention that that goes a really long way. You want to be able to influence somebody, mm -hmm. you build a relationship with them, you get them to trust you. That's a way to get them to trust you. Definitely. And they will follow you. That's leadership. They will follow you. You can influence an outcome and get everyone moving in the same direction towards a goal if you have empathy and you act as a servant leader and create the right culture with the right people on your team so that you have that positive environment. You have that spirit of helping one another. That's, that's really what it boils down to. No, 100%. I mean, there's really just two ways, right? People can rule by fear or they can rule by respect, which involves trust. One is going to, the longevity with your team is going to be a whole lot longer. And I love what you're saying, Rich, because, um, and even, even I'm doing this now, you and I kind of overlap with some of the things we do out there. Um, and also with students, is the whole student walks in the, the room, not just the, the book bag. and the, It's the same in corporate America. Or with The whole person, the person going through a divorce, the person whose child is sick, the person who just got fired from something else and landed with you, whatever, or, you know, physical illness, all of that walks in and they may not tell you. And they shouldn't have to. Like, just like you're saying, I've got this be. going on. And then a good leader is going to zip in. And the other thing I wanted to bring up to you, too, is so much we hear about from companies about the money. We don't want to bring so-and-so in to speak and do these things. When you come in and make these changes where people are now teach are Treating people, just like you just said, Rich, the golden rule from kindergarten. Treating people like we want to be treated, your cash is going to go up because you're not, you don't have the turnover. Because they want to be okay, there. 100%. 100%. I don't have the stat at my fingertips, but I was talking to someone in healthcare about this recently. And I think there's a stat that it costs like three times someone's oh, salary definitely. to replace. Yeah. Okay, so... Just think of the collateral damage of all of that. Forget about the stats. First of all, retention. People leave managers, typically, not their jobs. Oh, right? definitely. Toxic definitely. environment. And you can tell when a culture is not good just by those metrics. Turnover, right? Things along those lines. So it is in an organization's best interest without a shadow of a doubt right. to bring the right people in support them in the right ways, create the culture where they wake up and they want to come to work and contribute. They're That's the way excited. it has to be. Right? They're I want to be jacked up about what I'm doing. Right. Exactly right. And I say this, I go so far as to say, I've been blessed in my whole career, right? And even what I'm doing now, I feel so grateful for what I have an opportunity to do, right? I say, if I don't, my feet don't hit that ground and I'm not really excited about what I'm doing, I better find something else to do. Because that makes me tick. That's that what that's what really motivates me, right? right. That excitement, that, that fire in the belly, you know? So why wouldn't you want a group of team members feeling the same way? You would. That's a really good question. And this is a this is a really probably a really great place to um, you know, Rich does go out there and speak to you know, agencies, corporations, and does coaching with all this, you know, well-balanced leadership model information and happy to come in and speak to people and get your teams in shape. Right, Rich? I would absolutely, I, I love doing that because, again, it goes back to how can you serve? What kind of an impact can you have? If you can get someone to think differently about what they're doing, Right. right, and put some more positive behaviors and and literally institutionalize them. Like so, make them your new habits. Whether it's your own self care, whether it's your work life balance, right, and creating boundaries. Whether it's 
changing your leadership style, just recognizing, you know, your opportunities and changing the way you lead and adapting your style and on and on. There's so many things. But at the end of the day, let's face it, we spend a lot of our time at work. And it's hard. And it's not supposed to be easy. But you should at least enjoy it. You should feel like you're getting a benefit from being there. You should like the people you're working with. Definitely. Most of the time. I mean, if you don't, you mentioned before, it's flat out is not sustainable. Right. It's not sustainable. Right. I like you to won't say, keep people. I like to say, when I go out and do my, my thing, I like to say that, um, think about the time most of us spend at work, right? If you spend 40 hours, many, especially in, our, in, the, in the States, many are way more than that, right? Never mind the commutes mm-hmm. and the whole thing. So it should work. Your workplace should be like a really good mattress. You know, think of that the time we spend sleeping. You want it to be comfortable. You want to look forward to it. You want to wait, you want to wake up rejuvenated. It doesn't mean you can't have one bad night's sleep here and there, but mostly it's comfortable, it's enjoyable, and you look forward to it. Same with work. Yes. Yes. 100%, and right? You know what? Let's say you spend almost half of your time five days right. a week. Right. Half of your day, almost half of your day is at work. And there's another element of this, which we don't have to get into any deep dive on it, but the time management mastery component of that well-balanced leader model is very important. And I also talk about, you know, a a mechanism that I have through John Maxwell's tools to prioritize what you spend your time on. Because back to that time is finite, it's your greatest asset, right? You have to treat it as something really precious. So I have to invest in things that are of greatest value to me. And... The way to do that is really be in touch with what's important to you and then allocate time on your calendar to those things. If you have kids playing t-ball or a sport or they dance or whatever it is and that's important to you, you need to make sure you make the time for that. Period. The end. That's it. Just make the time for it because it's important enough for you. Carve it out. I mean, I'll tell you that just quickly. My my former dean, God, I loved her so much and she taught me how to avoid being meeting bombed on Google. So she, she would put, you know, busy meeting. It could be meeting with God on the chairlift and you got three feet of powder. <laughs> no, no one, and actually you laugh. Every, anyone who, my inner circle there knew that during, if I put meeting with G or something, they, <laughs> they knew that they knew where I was. <laughs> but here's, but, it's, but it's, it's healthy. It's so Everybody's funny. Like, yes, because I'm, I'm not a liar. I really am having a meeting with God on the chairlift. It's super spiritual. Getting some good turns in, that sort of thing, but but really to, to uh, like like you're saying, Rich, is life minutes wise. If we're if we're here, we're choosing to not be there. If we're there, we're choosing to not be here. You can't be here and there, as far as anybody knows, unless you mm-hmm. have some like ethereal skills, right? So it does come mm-hmm. down to that. And then and then lastly, the thing is too, because Rich has been threading this all the way through. I mean, I think we know research space right that happy people versus unhappy people are more are more focused more creative and more productive so even from a corporate financial standpoint the leaders are shooting themselves in both feet if they're not embracing their employees well-being you are 100 percent right at j and j we used to have something called energy for performance in life It was a program that we went through. They invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in people's time and effort to be trained on this energy for performance in life. And it had a few components. Physical well-being, obviously movement, exercise. Also movement during the day. Uh, Like um, recommending things like walking meetings. Yeah, yeah. Right? Treadmill Uh, desk. Stretch breaks. Little things like that. Just... You know, reinforcing movement and how that benefited you from a productivity and energy standpoint. And then also the nutritional aspect, how to eat right, right? Right. And how that could, and think about it, from an investment of the company standpoint, that's a great investment because they're going to get more focused, productive, energetic people who feel fulfilled. Oh, that company really cares about me. And then the loyalty. They're actually investing in me to learn about ways to take care of myself. That's really awesome. Right. You know, and then the loyalty so, yeah, piece the, follows, the right? Loyalty piece is key too. Because I mean, now you see that the people-centric part of this, the company cares about the employee. They will keep employees longer. 
they will have health. Think even about sick time, right? So if someone's healthier, they're not out sick. There's a big cost related to that as well. Oh, I just read a stat on that, actually. It's 60, uh, in the United States, 68% um, are looking for positions elsewhere. And then it talked about, I forget the percentage, but it was high enough, of un unhappy employees who end up in the emergency room. Like, there's just so many statistics, all research space. So the fact is, if we steer away from the sick model and towards the well-being model, it's a win-win for the CEOs, for all the, 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 what do you say, the leaders with a small L, kind of in the middle, making the difference, yeah. you know, here-ish. And then the employees, everybody's working with each other, like you said so eloquently, Rich, yeah. and it's a win-win. It is, and it's super important, and I love the opportunity to speak to organizations about this because, you know, I think that's what the employees would say to the leaders. Right. That's what they want, and that's what they need. I mean, the, the latest, who's just telling me? Oh, Greg, Ket Greg Kettner, you you know well. He's a he's also in our mastermind great group. Guy. Um, I forget what the statistics were, but the main point was when people were get, had the surveys, the employees, they chose being a pre actually authentically feeling appreciated over a little bit more money. I don't disagree, and I, I am not the least bit surprised by that. You know, a happier, happier, healthier work environment where I actually want, I'm stepping on the gas and I can't wait. Yeah, and I think there's also a demographic piece of this, which we don't have to get into, but the newer generation of professionals, they have different needs. They just have different needs. They're not driven by company loyalty and salary and throwing all these things at them. They want time and space. They want flexibility. The Gen Z, right? All mean? of those things that we were talking about. That's what they want. Right. So. Yeah, no, definitely. The, the, and Simon Sinek, who I love listening to him, I'm sure you listen to I mean, he's yes. all about the leading with, with trust and empathy because yes. without without trust and, and being other-oriented, a leader's got nothing, really. Yeah, no doubt. Right? Absolutely, 100% right. That's John Maxwell says, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. That's, that's all it's about. Right. And there's a way influence to influence, over position. and that's through what we talked about, through Definitely. the relationships and the communication with your team members, being authentic. That's so super important. Like, you know, how how many times I I can I can count on one hand because I was really blessed in the organizations I worked in, but I think that when you have a leader that's got an ulterior motive, you're not going to trust that person. Of course not. No, a dog's and not you know going to trust that person. You can spot it a mile away too. When you get more savvy in navigating around an organization, yeah. you could spot that a mile away. When somebody has an ulterior motive and they don't have your best interest or the, it's about them. You could see that it's about them. Nobody's going to nobody's gonna want to work for that leader. No. And that a bad apple can spoil the whole thing. You know, definitely. Right. For, for sure. So, wow. So, so Rich Bruno, executive coach and uh, founder of the Rich Bruno Consulting Agency, right? So uh, Rich is going to have his going to forward me his information. You can reach out to yep. him for speaking gigs, for coaching. If you want to follow up on the conversation, any any of the above, yeah. or actually it'll be below, then feel free to reach out. I just want to say thank you so much, Rich, for taking using your life minutes to be with us here today. Uh, much appreciated. Well, right back at you. I mean, I love spending time speaking with you. And uh, we just have a really good vibe together, and uh, you're a really good person. So who doesn't want to be around good people? I know I do. So I appreciate that you invited me on, and uh, thank you so much. All right, awesome. Thank you, listeners.